Now that I have my Hoya cuttings, I need to uh, decide how I'm going to cut them up for propagation and I haven't yet decided if I'm going to propagate these in soil or perlite or sphagnum moss. So uh, I guess we'll just decide that as we go here. If you haven't watched the video before this, the reason I cut this Hoya, it's a Publicalyx Royal Hawaiian Purple. The reason that I cut this is because it had grown up through the shelving that it was on and actually around and through a lamp as well. And it just, I had to cut it just to get it free. So um, what I'm gonna do is take this and then Again, if you didn't see that video, you know what, I'll put a little link here in the corner of the screen for you to watch the video before this. Um, but I'll show you the roots. I think you may be able to see. We have, um, these growths are advantageous roots. And what this is, is these locations on these stems, even though there are no leaves here, these have a lot of meristem cells and what meristem cells do in a plant is they avail themselves to become whatever the plant needs at the time so if i lay this on any kind of a medium that it's willing to grow in like perlite or um, soil mix potting mix sphagnum moss whatever it is um, these will either become actual roots that can feed the plant or they can also send out leaves or anything else because that's the kind of cells that are located right where these advantageous roots are. So um, I'm not throwing these away. I'm going to cut them into pieces and throw them into propagate as well. And then I have some that I started probably, I don't think it's been a year ago, but it's been several months back. Um, and I'll show you what they look like so you don't have to wait for an update on these. Although if you're interested in an update on these, let me know in the comments and I can do that also. So the first thing we need is a container. This is an old container um, that I used to keep nail polishes in, as you can see. And I don't even need it to be like a clear top because while these are propagating, I'm gonna try perlite, I think. While these um, are propagating in there, I am going to, they don't need a lot of light. So let me go get my perlite and we'll get moving. Here's my perlite. Um, if you want links, I have links for the products that I use in the description of this video. And I'm literally just going to pour a big pile of perlite into this container. And I'm gonna go get some water to add. Okay, at this point in growing, it really doesn't matter if you have um, filtered water or tap water, plants aren't gonna care. I just want to um, get the perlite moist I do not want it to be standing water because Hoyas will not like that. But I do want to make sure that there's enough moisture available that we're gonna create a super humid environment here. So that's actually more water than I would normally, cause you can see. I'm gonna leave it though. And then um, when I check on this, um, I'll show you maybe some other cuttings I have of Hoyas. When I check on this, the lid will have collected a lot of water and I'll allow it to dump, I'll dump it off away from the plants and get that moisture out of there pretty quickly. So where are my scissors? Here we go. As I said, these stems are going to have Mind frame. These stems are going to have lots of places where roots and leaves can form. So I'm just going to do about three cuts, just basically so that they fit into the container. And I'm just going to lay them across. I'm not really going to dig it in or anything. Um, absolutely nothing special going on here. Same with the next. I might just cut that into two. I'm not gonna leave these this size, 
What I will do is as they start forming leaves and roots along the stems, I'll begin cutting them again um, to separate them into more plants. But for now, that's totally fine. And then the last thing we have is the actual, we have four sets of leaf pairs here. And I'm going to just cut those apart from each other. I'm gonna leave a little bit of stem. I left that mostly because it has those advantageous roots there, but those may not form because the most powerful stuff is gonna be right here along the leaf um, node. So anyway, I think I'll cut here. Sorry, that was off camera, wasn't it? I'm realizing that now, my bad. And I do have a napkin here to take. Can you see the um, sap? It's not really white, it's kind of clear or even almost green. Hoyas a lot of times have white sap and it really won't hurt anything. I'm not um, sensitive to it, but you may be. So that's something to consider when you are um, handling Hoya cuttings, you're, you may have skin that's a lot more sensitive or reactive to the sap and you may want to wear like a pair of nitrile gloves or something. And also if it drips down onto your surface, like your table, if it's something that you don't want to have stained, then you certainly want to have that area um, protected in some way. And I'm just laying so that the stems are making light contact with the perlite, nothing more. Now this one I'm gonna cut here. This piece of stem has some of those advantageous roots. Hopefully you can see. So that's going in here as well, because guess what? It'll probably turn into something for me. I'm trying to leave a little bit of room because I was gonna try and squeeze in. I'm gonna do this, put that in the corner. I have this beautiful um, Monstera Silta Pecana that I cut in an Instagram video. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you should. I'm really active over there. <laughs> Not so much on YouTube, but I try. Um, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna pop this in the box as well. There's no room, but I just don't care. We can. We can all live together, please. Everyone behave nicely. Maybe I'll cut this a few places, like right there, and right there. And again, these don't have this is these aren't permanent cuts. We'll probably make a lot more cuts. Eh, nah, that's not gonna fit. Never mind. Okay, so he's going here. Boom. And it's as simple as that. We are all cut into nice little pieces. The lid is going to go on but I'm not going to seal it all the way. I'm going to tuck it under on this side and then leave it kind of loose on this side um, so that just the tiniest bit of air can get in. And then I do check my boxes daily. And that's just to take the lid off. When I go like this, this will be absolutely covered in, sorry, I'm out of frame. This will be absolutely covered in condensation. If you have too much going on in there, then you can just take this over to a sink or a drain somewhere and dump it. And then that way you're reducing the amount of moisture inside the container and just monitor that daily. And that's just exactly what I do with mine. So at this point, I'm going to take you over to um, my propagation shelves and I will show you some Hoya, Hoya Pubicalyx Royal Hawaiian Purple that I did start this way. Alrighty, here are um, some of my shelves that I propagate on and in here I'm just showing you this so you can see kind of like what an example of some of my other Hoyas propagating looks like and remember I said the condensation on the lid is crazy like it'll all pool here and if I have a whole lot inside I just let it dump literally onto the floor this is a concrete basement floor and you can take it to a sink or a drain though, if you like. And these are all Hoya Hushkeliana. And I had to do this because a big section of my Hoya Hushkeliana, um, it blooms yellow blooms and it bloomed all summer and fall. And it actually was blooming 
while it was dying. <laughs> so um, I had a, a root rot issue and so I made some serious cuts. As you can see, I just um, cut off big long stems and um, that was the, my way of saving in the plant. So these have been in here for quite a good while. Um, I want to say like literally the first of the year, I think was when I did these and were very, very well rooted in, very well rooted in. So I don't bother them uh, for right now. I do have them, as you see, in a very humid environment and I have them on top of heat mats. So that's what this is here. And um, the I have other cuttings in here and here. And because I have so many, I actually rotate these ones every other day and let the um, let them take turns, one on the top and one on the bottom. Um, and I do open the lids on these every day just to check and to let out any excess moisture. But I mean, there's a ton of moisture in there. They are Hoyas and they're loving life. So I'm not really gonna mess with it. Um, because it's working just fine. And I have other varieties beside that, but I just wanted to show you those ones. And then I wanted to take you up here to see some of my Hoya Publicalix that I have already propagated in the way that I had just showed you. So these bigger ones are started as two leaf cuttings. So these ones are not ones that started from just a stem. This one, this little guy, see how cute and little these leaves are, they're tiny. That actually doesn't belong to him, that goes over here too, this one that has, that started from two leaf cuttings. This one started from stem cuttings. And I think I have one other one in here. Yeah, right here. Those started from stem cuttings. Aren't they gorgeous? They're just as beautiful as these other ones. They just don't have the same size. If you are not in a hurry, then then keeping these stems, I mean, to me, I, I just can't throw away good plant material. If it's something that can propagate, um, it feels really wasteful to me. And I love Hoyas, and I know that lots of other people out there do too. So yeah, these are gonna take way longer to get to this size. Well maybe not that much longer as soon as you know as soon as it really warms up down here this is in a basement this is where I um, keep almost all of my propagating um, and I mean as soon as it gets warm down here these guys are gonna go so probably by the um, end of summer I would say these guys will be a saleable size maybe not but if they're not I don't care I'll leave them in there and uh, keep on trucking with them because I started them from stems. I'm not going to throw them away now. That's for sure. Aren't these beautiful though? I just love Hoya. Underneath of us because I do love this potting bench, but the slats are not connected. So soil potting mix and all that um, does spill. There we go. Snap these into place. Perfect. All right. And I need a bigger pot as well. This is what I found and it is just one size bigger. As you can see, it's a tiny bit deeper and a very tiny bit bigger around. It's gonna be really hard to see here, but just, I don't know, a quarter of an inch maybe all the way around bigger. And I don't wanna go huge because that's the way you get root rot from a Hoya. So uh, my soil mix is dried out. This is um, cocoa coir and perlite. These little bits are charcoal, and this is my regular houseplants mix. So what I'm gonna do is move this over. I don't have my any Hoya mix up, so I'm just going to take some of this and add some bark 
there is bark but not nearly enough so that's what I'm going to do for potting mix. If you're interested in my recipe for Hoya potting mix, check out my website, which is um, lggardening.com. There is a link in the description of this video, and I have tons of houseplant content on my website that you can go to, like just for maybe better percentages or uh, better information for how I mix. Um, my potting mix for Hoyas. Th these are all just small pieces of bark and I think I'm almost out of my large larger pieces of bark which I am. I have almost none left. I don't know if you can see that but I'm going to put what I have left in there and then it's time to reorder. My goodness it goes quickly seems like I'm mixing potting mix all the time. So I'm just going to mix that all in. So we have a very, very airy mix. The bark will begin to break down. Um, it will provide places for oxygen to um, be sequestered in the potting mix. And the perlite, of course, is so light that it works its way up to the top, keeping your soil aerated as well, which you definitely need with coir because coir can compact into like a brick, like cement for real. The last thing I'm going to do before I use this is I'm going to moisten it because the coir is pretty dry. I know that looks like a lot of water, but coir can absorb it like crazy so I'm just going to move it around oh I think I forgot to say it I think I have warm castings in here too maybe I'll add some more that'll do it okay it's pretty moist too which is fine this guy is actively growing so he won't reject what little bit of moisture is in there um Let's have a look-see. Well, I see roots here. Can you see those? I'm sure you can. Oh my, come on, friend. Oh no. It's kind of what that sounds like. Here we go. Okay. They're beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful roots. So I'm really not going to disturb these much. I'm going to let anything that wants to fall off, fall off. I have had this plant for two years. Um, two years, a year and a half maybe. Um, and it's been in this pot that whole time, which is crazy, but they are epiphytic plants. They don't really need or want the same kind of root space that other plants do. However, this plant has not bloomed for me, and I find that so annoying. I know that um, Pubacalyx is kind of like a Carnosa, where it's not a plant that is going to start blooming for you uh, for several years. Actually, if you have been on my blog, you'll see... Um, an article where I was griping about my Hoya Carnosa Compacta, my Hindu rope Hoya. Um, it was four and a half years old before we got blooms. So, and they were spectacular. So fragrant, so worthwhile. And it's a, it is one of the prettiest, I'm not trying to brag. It is just the most beautiful plant. 
Um, it's huge, beautiful, I love it. I didn't really want to use my bare hands for this. I don't usually like to use my bare hands because of like warm castings and stuff like that that I do mix in my soil, but whatever, we're here. Get in there. So at this point, I'm really just kind of pushing potting mix down in the sides so that this little guy will have just that extra little bit of growing room and I'm sure that we'll see the results. I said this in the previous video also, um, but it's March now and so our house plants are, they're ready to go. This is, it's go time for them. So don't be afraid if you're holding off repotting anything till spring, you can do it now. It's as far as they're concerned, at least in this hemisphere, oh my, what are you doing? It is spring for them. They are, they're waking up. You're probably seeing your plants um, starting to drink a little bit more, being thirstier. And hopefully you're seeing some new growth points and stuff like that coming out too. I think I've just about got it. And if I don't, I can always add potting mix again later. There you are, friend. So that is it. He's repotted. I need just a little touch right here. He's repotted. The roots look good. The plant looks amazing. I don't love the bleaching of the leaves and uh, I, may, I may be moving that shelf down lower away further away from the grow light that it's under but I, I haven't made a decision about that yet we'll see if I do and that interests you like for a video or something to watch please let me know in the comment section also um, any other questions or whatever that you may have in the comment section uh, that was great hopefully all these long stems that we have like this guy that's <laughs> going on forever. I'm going to have these underneath the grow lights. I'm just going to give that, ba basically that whole shelf will be just for this Royal Hawaiian purple. And hopefully those will start filling out with leaves and just growing like crazy because that's what they're good at. Okay, my friends. Um, I do need some ideas from you for the next videos coming up. If there are some requests that you have, I'd love to know what they are, what um, you need help with or what is interesting to you to see. Just let me know um, in the comment section here. That is always very helpful to me. I really hope um, you enjoyed this video. I hope that it was helpful to you in some way or at least entertaining. Um, and I hope that you all are staying healthy and happy right now. Um, warm weather is coming. I, I know it. So um, maybe we can all start getting out of our homes a little bit more. That's really an exciting prospect for me. <laughs> I don't know about you. So take care. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.